September is here and of course with it we have the latest release of Home Assistant, that is Home Assistant 2024.9. Today we will look at what's new in this release, we'll start in a couple of seconds. So let's get cracking with what's new. First off, let's start with the sections. You already know that the sections were introduced some time ago as an experimental feature, and they are still in the experimental phase. The reason for it is that still not everything is supported, not everything has been polished and not everything is up to standard. And to one point, when everything is done, but nobody knows when it will be, we may also get the option of importing data from our current dashboards to the section dashboards, but don't get your hopes too high. But in the meantime, let's look at what's new. If, for example, you have created your own dashboards with a sections view, they may look something like this. And some cards do require more space than the other cards. So, for example, if you have a default map, it may look like this. If we were to edit it, we could potentially expand it to be the full size of the grid, like this. But still, this may not be enough for you, especially if you are, for example, using cameras and, for example, also have a Reolink Duo camera that has a very long image. This would not suffice. So we have a couple of new options here. First of all, we can increase the size of the sections. We click on the edit field and select the width of the section. It can be either one, two, three, four or five sections. In my case, my screen supports with this resolution only four sections. So let's start with, for example, two of them. Click on save. And as you can see, this section is now wide two sections. We have one, two that are combined or merged. And then we have also a third one here. But that's not all. If you have a card that you want to expand to all of this real estate, you click on Edit, Layout, and tick the Full Width box. And now the card will take all of the real estate that this section has. If we were to increase it to three sections, it would cover all of the available space. Remember that not all of the cards still support this functionality, especially the custom cards that you install through the Hex or Home Assistant Community Store. So this may or may not work with the card that you want it to work. Currently, if it's not working with the custom card that you want to use it with, just nudge the author, open the issue on the GitHub repository of the author and ask him if it's possible to implement this new functionality. Energy Dashboard has been added to Home Assistant some time ago, but we still do have improvements. And this release has a new and awesome improvement. For example, if you look at individual device details, you can see all the details for each and every device, how much power it is using in a period of time. But still there may be some unaccounted for devices that are not listed as individual devices that are actually using electricity and you do not see it in this individual device's detail usage. Well, that has changed with the latest release. In the energy section, if we scroll to individual device detail usage, we now see this gray area here or gray section here that is telling us that there is still some other energy usage that is untracked by individual devices, but at least you can see it, how much is it compared to other devices that you are already tracking. A lot of hype about the AI. And we already have support inside Home Assistant for the OpenAI conversation, Google AI and also Olama. But that's not all. This release brings us a new integration. And this one is called Anthropic Conversation. Same as with OpenAI, Google AI and also Olama, you now have option to integrate this inside Home Assistant. Remember that Olama is local large language model, but other services such as this Anthropic, OpenAI and Google AI are cloud-based services. Something that you will definitely not see in the Home Assistant, not in the backend or frontend directly at least is the big change. 
it has taken some time, but all the libraries that Home Assistant is using, for example, for the integration, for over 2,800 integrations that Home Assistant already has, have been checked and they all fall in the same category and are open source and can be freely used inside Home Assistant. There is still one additional check that Home Assistant devs will do, and that is to see if dependencies of the dependencies also fall under the same license agreement, but this also makes sure that everything that is used inside Home Assistant will be used in future. As I said, this is not something that you will directly see, but this is also very important to ensure the future stability, compatibility, and of course, legality of Home Assistant. There are some new integrations, Anthropic Conversation, which we already mentioned as a new AI agent that you can use inside Home Assistant, Nice Go that can be used to open or control your gates or garage doors, Fujitsu FG Layer for the HVAC systems, SM Lite devices of various types, and if you are using Root Touchline SL underfloor heating system, it's now also available in Home Assistant. Since I only have one of those integrations available, let me show you SM Lite. And by the way, if you don't know what SM Lite is, what they do, check out the video up here. When you install the new version of Home Assistant, either beta release or full September release, if you check notifications, you should see that new device was discovered. If you check the list and you also have SM Lite devices, compatible devices, you should see it available here. Click on configure. Submit and add it to an area. Finish. On the integrations page, you will now be able to see SM Lite as integration. Click on it, click on device that you have, and you will see some of the diagnostics available. For example, core chip temperature, Zigbee chip temperature, and two additional entities that you can enable, file system usage, and also RAM usage. Besides that, you will get the information about hardware. For example, this is SLZB06P7 by SM Lite. Firmware is version this one here. For the Zigbee, we do not have currently firmware version. Hopefully, this will be fixed in the future. And we also have MAC address of the device. And after a couple of seconds, we should also get information about file system usage and also RAM usage. In this case, 12 kilobytes for file system and 85 kilobytes for the RAM used. But besides new integrations, there are always some other noteworthy changes or improvements to the current integration. And there is really a long list of them. So if you want, go check out the documentation that I will be probably linking down in the video description. From other noteworthy changes, I would like to emphasize this one here. If you are just starting with Home Assistant and you, for example, want to install Zigbee to MQTT as your Zigbee coordinator, or for example, open LoRa to MQTT, or something similar that is using MQTT, what you usually had to do is you need to start the MQTT integration inside Home Assistant, but before that you needed to install the add-on in Home Assistant. Now we have a simplified process. If you, for example, want to install the integration MQTT, and you do not have add-on MQTT installed in Home Assistant, but you want to use internal Home Assistant MQTT, this can now all be done automatically. Of course, you need to be running Home Assistant OS, it will not work in the Docker version. But don't forget, if you are updating your system or upgrading to the September release, you should also look at the changes that may break some of your integrations. For example, some time ago proximity has been changed and now it is completely removed as a proximity entity, but you can still use proximity integration Home Assistant, just not with the proximity entity anymore. Or System Monitor has deprecated processor sensor from System Monitor, so that's gone also. And in MQTT, we have removal of the scheme for the MQTT vacuum platform. These are just some of the highlights from the September release of Home Assistant. But remember, the list of everything what has been changed, improved, touched, or whatever done with it is really, really long. You can always search for everything that has been improved, added, removed, or changed in Home Assistant by following the link. And I will be leaving that link down in a video description. And if you follow that link, you will see the whole list of everything that was changed, added, removed, tweaked, or I don't know what, in this release of Home Assistant. 
it may at first look like not a lot of things have happened this month, but remember that under the hood a lot, a lot of stuff is going on. So while there may not be some extra new functionalities added, a lot of the things have been improved, bugs squished, etc, etc. But also Northern Hemisphere, summer, vacation, so a lot of people, devs from Home Assistant and also contributors are enjoying the sunny days. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video. And before I end it, I have a couple of announcements. First of all, if you do like this video, as always, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also, while you are already there, check that you are subscribed. Next thing, there will be a birthday stream for the Home Assistant, Nabucasa and Open Home Foundation. So don't forget to mark in the calendar 17th of this month or 17th of September. And join the stream, because there will be couple of surprises, nothing spectacular, but I really do hope that it will be interesting for you. And before I end up the video, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or also commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.